two witnesses already been sworn in. Thank you, Judge Dallas. Good morning. Good morning. Could you please introduce yourself? Detective Michelle Austin, Clayton County Police Department, President from Junior. Would you please spell your name for us? M I C H E L L E, last name Austin, A L S T O N. And can you briefly describe your duties with the uh, Clayton County Police Department? For the past two years, I have been part of the Criminal Investigation Division at the Special Victims Unit, Detective Cyber uh, Crimes Against Women and Children. And have you been assigned uh, as one of several detectives to a case that eventually uh, led to the arrest of an individual by the name of Kenneth Bowen? Yes, sir. All right. If you will, um, let, let me take you back to the 4th of July of 2015. Um, are you familiar with the person by the name of... Was there an incident where the police department was called out slightly after midnight on the 4th of July? Yes, sir. And can you describe for us what happened in that incident? In that incident, she stated that someone had um, come into her home and sexually assaulted her. Okay, and um, kind of give us a little bit of a, a background of how it happened, where she was, uh, when this happened, uh, did she know the individual, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, well, I'm sorry, let me correct myself. And then she was raped on the rear, in the rear of her apartment. Okay. Okay. She stated that she did not know the offender and that um, she was coming through her breezeway of her apartment complex and the offender grabbed her and dragged her into the, into the side area of her apartment complex where he sexually assaulted her. So when you initially said the rear of the apartment, do you mean inside of the apartment or outside That's of the apartment? That's going to be outside of the apartment. She was dragged to the rear of the apartment complex. Uh, did, she, did she indicate um, that she knew the person at all? No, she did not indicate that she knew the person. Uh, nevertheless, did she provi provide some sort of description of the suspect? She did. Um, she, she basically said that he smelled of alcohol and cigarettes, and she was able to say that he had on a gray hoodie, blue jeans, and black slides. She stated also that he had brandished a black revolver. And what did he do with the revolver? He um, pointed the revolver at her in um, an effort to get her to cooperate with the sexual assault. Did she indicate whether she consented to that? She stated that she did not consent to the sexual assault or rape. Was anything taken from her? Um, in this case, they, he took her uh, cellular phone and forty dollars. Okay. Now. Uh, once the police department went out to uh, the location of the incident uh, and spoke to her, was she taken anywhere afterward? Yes, she was taken to have a sexual assault kit done. Now, are you familiar with sexual assault examinations? Yes, sir. Uh, have you ever attended sexual assault examinations? I have been in a room for a sexual assault examination, but I was not able to actually view it. They don't allow law enforcement in the room to view it, so we're usually in the next room, and then they come and give us details after it's completed. All right. Now, with a sexual assault examination, was there a swab um, that was used on her vagina to uh, see if there was any male DNA that had been left by a suspect? Yes, sir. All right. And was that packaged and sent off to the GBI for yes, testing? Sir. And at the time, back on the 4th of July of 2015, was there any sort of DNA uh, off of that swab that was, be that was identified to anyone in particular? Um, no, there was no DNA that was identified. They, they said that they did extract male DNA from the rape kit through the swab that was taken from her vaginal area. However, we did not have a suspect or there was no hit on file to come back to a particular person at that time. Right. Now, the cell phone, was it later recovered? Yes, the family was able to um, what we call ping or locate the cell phone through the um, app that she had on her phone. It was recovered, uh, which we figured after the fact, but it was recovered. It was a rainy night. We did not collect the cellular phone from the family because it had water damage to it, so we were not going to be able to get any kind of evidence off the phone. However, we found later on down the line that it was recovered approximately 15 feet or so from um, Mr. Powell's house. From Mr. Bowen's house? Um, excuse me, yes, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bowen's house. All right, now, Mr. Mr. Bowen, does he live at a location at 70, or did he live at a location? Yes, sir. Is that located here in Clayton County? Yes, it is. Um, and the cell phone you said was located how far from that house? Um, approximately 15 to 20 feet from the house. It was, the, the way it was described to me is it was located. If you walked um, from Mr. Bowen's house, it was kind of located to the right, more toward Tower Stadium, but it was on the same area on the corner of where Mr. Bowen uh, resided or resided. Now, I want to, are you familiar with the person by the name? Yes, sir. All right. And let me take you to uh, December 12th and into the early morning hours of December 13th of 2016. Uh, did the Clayton County Police Department respond to a sexual assault involving? Yes. Okay. Now, where did that occur? Um, it, that this occurred inside of her apartment. Okay. Was that? Yes, sir. Is that located in Jonesboro? Yes, sir. In Clayton County? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Describe for the court, if you was doing at the time uh, that, that the incident occurred and kind of how she described that it occurred. She was inside of her residence doing her normal activities for the evening. She said there was a knock at the door. She opened the door and a man, um, who we later identified as Mr. Bowen, was at the door asking for another young lady. And advised him that she did not live there. He then proceeded to push into her um, residence, pushed her into the bedroom. She described being um, forced to um, perform sexual acts on Mr. Bowen. She stated that a knife was put to her throat and she was told to cooperate. Um, at the time, um, she did suffer a um, laceration to her hand during the assault. And uh, she stated that he cut her bra. Did she indicate that that was against her will? That was against her will, yes, sir. She did. All right, keep going with told you. Go ahead. She stated that after um, the sexual assault took place, um, he made her get into the shower in her bedroom, told her to run the shower and count to a certain number to give him time to get out of the house. And during this incident, he took her phone as well. Um, she stated that he used a towel within the residence to wipe himself off in the bathroom before leaving her in the bathroom. Um, and, put, and of course, in the shower with the shower run. Right. Were, was anyone ever to, able to locate her cell phone or anything like that? Um, I do not believe her cell phone. Yep, you know what? Her cell phone was located outside of the residence. Okay, outside of her residence? Yes. Okay. Now, was she also taken for a sexual assault examination? She was also taken for a sexual assault examination. Um, she was, I'm sorry, able to give us a description of his clothing as well, all black with a colorful graphic t shirt, um, which is one thing that stuck out to us in the police report. She received a medical examination. Um, and she was also treated for a laceration to her palm, her hand. Now, during the sexual assault examination, was a swab used as well on her vagina to, in, to uh, obtain any male DNA that may have been left? Yes, sir. We received a report back from GBI that she also had male DNA um, that was found during the sexual assault examination. And at that time um, of the uh, testing from the GBI, were they able to match that DNA to any suspect? They were not able to match it to a suspect at that time. Um, now, later on down the road, once Mr. Bowen had been identified as a suspect, was a lineup conducted with... Yes, sir. Oh. Um, there was a lineup that was conducted which was able to pick Mr. Bowen out of said lineup, six pack lineup. Right. I'm not sure if I asked you earlier, um, but this location, location um, are you familiar with approximately how far it is from... Let me ask it this this way: Is it approximately within two miles? Yes, sir. And the residence with is that within approximately two miles as well? Yes, sir. Let me take you to an individual by the name. Of yes, sir. Okay. And on December sixteenth of two thousand and sixteen, at approximately a quarter of four in the morning, uh, did someone contact the police department regarding? Yes, sir. Um, um, circumstance. She was able to contact her boyfriend from within the residence after the rape occurred from a tablet that was inside the residence because the offender took her cellular phone. Stated that um, the subject ambushed her into the apartment as she was going into her apartment and that she was also sexually assaulted. That a knife was put to her throat. Um, she tried to grab the knife with her hand. Her hand was, um, was cut. And um, she also stated that she was also told to get into the shower with the shower running. Her phone was taken and placed outside the residence, and like I said, she contacted a boyfriend from her tablet that was left within the West residence after the assault occurred. And to your knowledge, was the boyfriend the one that contacted the yes, police? Sir. And did she yes, sir. in Clayton County? Yes, sir. Was she taken for a sexual assault examination after uh, her sexual assault? Yes, she was. And was the sexual assault examination conducted in the same way and manner in which it had been conducted with the prior two victims that we just spoke about a few yes, minutes sir. ago? And was there a swab that was obtained uh, from the vaginal area that had male DNA on it? Yes, sir. And did the GBI confirm that there, were, there was male DNA yes, on it? Yes, sir. Were they able to, at that point, were they able to match that DNA to any suspect? No, sir. Are you familiar with an individual by the name of... It's a victim who was sleeping in her residence um, when she stated she woke up to uh, the offender inside of her residence. Okay. Now, um, is that location at Jonesboro? Yes, sir. Is that located here in Clayton County? Yes, sir. Now, that location, um, is that approximately within two miles of the residence that is the defendant's residence? Yes, sir. And just as it was with her residence, is that within approximately two miles of the defendant's residence yes, as well? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, um, did that occur at approximately quarter or four in the morning? Yes, sir. Okay. And can you describe for us exactly what happened in the, what she indicated happened inside of the residence? She stated that she walked to the male inside of the residence um, in her bedroom. 
she stated that the offender told her that if she did not cooperate, he pinned her to the bed and told her that if she did not cooperate, um, quote, his homeboy with her, her child that was in the next room. Okay. Um, she stated that she was sexually assaulted, that was a sexual assault. Um, she stated that um, the offender in this did have a, a knife as well. She stated that he wore uh, light blue jeans, a light bandana over his face at that time. Um, and in this uh, assault, she actually had an eight-year-old child who woke up in the residence from her making noise and attempted to block his mother's doorway um, when he seen the offender try to flee from the residence. And the offender then punched the child in the stomach before this child fell to the ground. He climbed over, stepped over the child and fled from the residence. Okay. Now, uh, how were police contacted in this incident? Um, contacted, I'm not really sure. I'm not familiar with how they were contacted in this incident. All right, uh, but police did respond to the residence? Yes, sir. They okay. responded and uh, arrived at the residence around 3.30 a.m. Okay. Now, was made for a sexual assault examination? Yes, sir, she was. Um, and was another swab obtained uh, from her vaginal area? Yes, sir. And what, um, was there male DNA on that swab? Yes, sir. And at that point, was the GBI able to match the DNA to a male suspect? No, sir. Do you know, or are you familiar with a person by the name? Is another victim that was matched by DNA. Um, she stated that she was um, awakened in her bedroom by a male um, who physically restrained her to her bed. This bedroom, sorry, is located at Riverdale, Clayton County. Um, around zero three hundred hours, she said that um, he he grabbed her and choked her, held her down by her neck and her arms. He did brandish a knife, um, as in uh, the previous assault stated that he forced her to perform oral sex, um, stated that that was, um, stated that he climbed on top of her and penetrated her. Uh, she stated also that she tried to grab the knife with fear that it would cut her neck and she was also, she also sustained a laceration to her hand. Um, she stated that when he tried to exit the residence, she tried to chase him, to fight him um, inside of the residence. There was an altercation that took place in the hallway of the residence. Uh, somehow she retrieved a metal pole that was within the residence and struck him twice in his chest and he punched her twice in her face. Now, did this occur May 6th of 2017? Yes, sir. And just a moment ago you indicated, was she taken for a sexual assault examination um, after police arrived? Yes, sir. She was taken for a sexual assault examination um, by the uh, road officers and she was also taken to have the laceration to her hand um, taken care of as well. The sexual assault examination, to your knowledge, was it performed in the same way and manner uh, that the other sexual assault examinations were yes, performed? Sir. And was a swab obtained uh, from her vaginal area? Yes, sir. And was there male DNA on the swab? Yes, sir. And at that point, was anyone, uh, was anyone able to match the DNA to any suspect? No, sir. This the Riverdale location, is it within approximately two miles of the location where the defendant lives? Yes, sir. In the same location with the five um, location is that within approximately two miles of where the defendant lives? Yes, sir. All right. Are you familiar with the person by the name of? She is another victim of the offender. Um, she is a rape victim that lived, um, and she was attacked approximately 1:30 a.m. She stated that she woke up again to the offender in her residence. Um, her one-year-old child was in the bed with her when she was sexually assaulted. That was all. Um, she stated that he had a approximately six-inch knife that was used and held to her throat and threats were made to harm her child that was in the bed with her. She did not cooperate. Right. Now, um, you, I'm not sure if you indicated the date, but was the date? Uh, the date was 7-20-2017. And the location, is that the location of the incident? Yes, sir. And is that here in Clayton County? Yes, sir. All right. And was she taken, or were the police contacted? Yes, sir. The police were contacted and she was taken for a sexual assault at Piedmont Henry. All right. And was it conducted in the same way and manner in which the other ones were conducted? Yes, sir. Um, and was a vaginal swab obtained that had male DNA on it, according to the GBI? Yes, sir. And at that point, did any, was anyone able to match the DNA to any suspect? No, sir. This location, is it within approximately two miles of the defendant's yes, residence? Was anything taken um, from uh, in this incident? Um, her car keys with her house keys attached. And her phone was taken. All right. Now, in, in, do you know off the top of your head in how many of these incidents a cell phone was taken? All of our incidents, a cell phone was taken. All right. And typically, where was the cell phone located? 
usually it was located around the house, on the out, outside the house, whether it be front yard, backyard, it was always located around the house area except the very first cellular phone that was found by the offender's residence. All right, in, in every single one of the assaults? Yes, sir. All right. Are you familiar with the person by the name of... Yes, sir. Was there an incident that occurred April 11th of 2018, just past midnight? Yes, sir. Sleep in her bed. Uh, she stated she woke up to a male individual in her house um, who was nine months pregnant at the time of her sexual assault. Stated that the male got on top of her and began not put up um, much of a fight because of her uh, health condition of being pregnant at that time. She was, you know, afraid that the baby would be harmed. Uh, was told by the offender that the bonnet she had on her head, she should pull over her face to cover her eyes, which she complied with. Um, at that time, a uh, knife was brandished and she was forced to give oral sex. Vaginal penetration in this case took place for approximately two hours in the residence. All right. With, yes. All right. Um, now, this location of, was the location? Yes, sir. Is that located here in Clayton County? Yes, sir. Is it within approximately two miles of the location, of, which is the defendant's residence? Yes, sir. Now, was she taken for a sexual assault examination as well? She was taken for a sexual assault examination, and we were able to get the rape, um, excuse me, the sexual assault examination done prior to her going into labor. She had the child back next day. Okay. All right. Now, are you familiar with the person by the name? It's a victim who was in her residence, located at when someone entered the residence a little after midnight. Um, she stated that she was sleeping in her bed, and she awoke to see a shadow in her bedroom when she looked up. She stated she wanted to sit up in her bed and he immediately um, charged toward her. Um, she said she was able to get up from the bed and as she started to run for her doorway, he grabbed her by the throat, throwing her up against the wall and hit her in her face um, approximately three to four times until she was cooperating. She stated he then vaginally penetrated her with penis against her will in her bedroom for approximately an hour. Okay. Now, um, the location... Yes, is that in Jonesboro, Clayton County? Yes, sir. Is that approximately within two miles of the defendant's residence? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, was she taken for a sexual assault examination as well? Yes, sir. She was taken to Southern Crescent. And was it conducted, as far as you know, in the same way and manner generally as the other sexual assault examinations? Yes, sir. And was a vaginal swab obtained um, that had male DNA on it? Yes, sir. And at that point, was there any suspect that had been identified in any of the sexual assaults that we had talked, we've talked no, about? Sir, we just got the confirmation back from the GBI. Um, and after this case, when I got mine back, that all the um, sexual assaults were linked by DNA, but we did not have a suspect. Now, um, all of these uh, victims, did any of them indicate that they consented to any of this activity? No, sir. All victims stated that sexual assaults happened against their will. Okay. And all of these victims indicated uh, that they were penetrated vaginally by penis. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Now, how, how was the individual by the name of Kenneth Bowen, how was his, his name, how did it first come up during the course of the investigation? So um, during the course of the investigation, we were basically striking out, um, trying to find a suspect. So our lieutenant's captain and us detectives sat down and we started reviewing all the case files and preparing all the notes for all the victims because as you stated, there have been multiple detectives that have worked on these cases over the course of years. My lieutenant decided that um, we would start from you know the ground up. Let's start with suspicious persons calls. So what he did is he went um, through our system, which we consider green screen, and he started looking for any 911 calls from citizens in Clayton County that involve suspicious people between the hours of you know when our rapes were occurring. He also focused mainly on the areas that our rapes had occurred in. Um, after about an hour or so of looking at um, and listening to 911 calls and looking at our system, um, he was able to come with the offender's name. What happens when a uh, suspicious person call goes out, um, an officer goes out the scene and he makes, if he makes contact with any individuals in the complexes or the area where the complaint was made, they usually will run or get the person's information, their name, they provide them with an identification. And what we do is we call dispatch, we have dispatch run that person's name. And the reason for this is to make sure the person is not wanted out of the county and just to have a name on file in case something were to happen or come up later. Well, during the course of his investigation, speaking of Lieutenant Reimers, he found that um, the suspect did come up in a suspicious person's 911 call. Um, he began looking further into the call. Um, we looked on what we call our local site and we got information uh, for the offender. And he then went on to see if the offender had a social media. 
the reason that we wanted a social media so that we can get a picture of the offender, but he did not. But we were able to link other family members to the offender who had a social media. So in doing so, he went to the offender's brother's social media page. He seen that the offender's brother had on a Clayton County Police Department uniform. This, he looked further into it by going to our files to find if we had a, a, a officer or a mandated person with the last name Bowen that had worked for our department or had been previously hired. And that is when we found that Kenneth Bowen had been a um, cadet, as we call it, in the police academy, but had not completed the police academy. So further investigation, um, we got the people, excuse me, Lieutenant Limers was able to get his personnel file um, and he compared it with the notes that the victims gave. When you Actually, say the notes that the victims gave, what well, are you the looking for? Gave certain descriptions of the suspect that they could remember during sexual assaults. And one of the things that stuck out was the tattoos that um, Mr. Bowen had on his arm. So when we got the personnel file, we were able to see that he did, in fact, have tattoos because the Clayton County Police Department, they marked down any markings on your body when you are hired through the department. And one of the things that was in his profile was that he had tattoos on his arm. <laughs> He went on to search the address, research the address of Mr. Bowen and found that the address was in direct center of all of the sexual assaults or rapes that had taken place in the county. He lived directly in the center of all and within a two mile radius of all of the sexual assaults. We looked up um, different things that, you know, we're able, we have a system where we're able to go in and see if any um, police reports have been filed in regards to Mr. Bowen. And it was found that a traffic stop did occur um, in the county and Mr. Bowen on the body cam footage during a traffic stop was in a gray and colored vehicle with dark tinted windows. Why was that significant? <clears throat> that was significant because one of our big victims, um, I believe it was the victim from back the attack occurred, ran to her doorway and did see that the offender left in a gray and colored vehicle that she described during her police report and when she filed her police report. So this was significant for us. Um, with everything that was put together as far as probable cause was concerned, um, between the social media, um, and the other thing, I'm sorry, before I forget, was that um, we did have a 10-month period of time where um, no rapes occurred. We went from rapes, and then it was just a blank. Well, we found that during our background investigation, Mr. Bowen was enlisted in the service at some point during the times that we had no rapes that occurred, and that he would have been away for um, training for the service during that time. Right. So that was the other thing. Now, um, when the GBI was... Uh, um, was running tests on all of the the um, DNA that was located. Were they able to conclude whether the male DNA from all of these attacks was the same? Yes, sir. Okay, so it was the same from all of the attacks. They just didn't know whose it was. Yes, sir. All the DNA came back, um, and what they do is they gave us a printout. As more victims had come in, they gave us a printout, and it basically says this case is related to this case. And they name all the victims who have the same male DNA found within that rape kit or off that buckle swab that was conducted during that rape kit. And they're able to tell us that this is going to be the same male. However, we do not have the male to match to it. So all females or all victims were attached to that DNA. Prior to obtaining the defendant's DNA, um, did you all have the GBI speak with any of the victims to have a sketch conducted? Yes, sir. Um, there was a sketch conducted on three victims, right. um, and they were able to compile the sketch with, it wasn't, I don't know if she necessarily worked for the GBI, but we have a sketch artist, that, sketch artist that works through Clayton County that did come to the precinct and do sketches with three of the victims who were able to give sketches that were very similar in features to Mr. Bond. All right. Now, um, at some point, did uh, detectives obtain a, a search warrant for the defendant's DNA? Yes, sir. After um, we, we sat down, Lieutenant Reimers put all everything together as far as um, everything that matched up for Mr. Bowen to give us enough probable cause to present to a judge, um, a warrant was taken for the DNA of Mr. Bowen. All right. Now, uh, the warrant that was taken, that was based upon the attack. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And she is the one that selected him out of a lineup? Yes, sir. She was, she was shown a lineup before the search warrant was obtained. Um, and she did pick him out of the line together. All right, do you recall approximately when the defendant's DNA was taken? Uh, the defendant's DNA was taken on, I this was on August 20th. All right, and when it was taken, um, was it taken using buckle swabs? Yes, sir. And are buckle swabs the items that you would swab inside of someone's cheek and then place in a sealed bag and send it off to the GBI? Yes, sir. Was that done? That was done. Um, the, how it normally works is there's two buckle swabs, we label them right and left, 
and we take a, a, a DNA sample from the right side of the cheek as well as the left side of the cheek and seal it um, in front of the, the offender. So we see that it's being sealed and then we send it off to the GBI and they conduct the test. Now typically when it comes to DNA testing with the GBI, is it fair to say it can take months to, to come back with a result? Yes, sir, normally it does take months. Was there an exception that was made for this case? Yes, sir. There was an exception due to the amount of um, sexual assaults that had occurred and how much it was occurring GBI. We did contact GBI and ask them to put a rush on the um, testing of the bubble swaps. All right. And did they do that? Yes, they did. And was there, and can you tell us the results of the DNA comparison of uh, Kenneth Bowen to the DNA that had been submitted to the GBI from the victim? Um, it came back that he was a match to victims. Um, I just know at the, the the amount of DNA, I mean the amount of surety or clarity that it would have been or is Kenneth Bowen was a number that I had never even seen before. Right. It was something like 30 plus zeros at the end of the number. I had never seen a, an amount that was that high in positivity of the DNA of the suspect. Would, it, would I be accurate in saying that the odds that it is not Kenneth Bowen is one in 100 no million? Yes. And is that 100 plus 30 zeros? Yes, sir. All right. Um, and do you see Kenneth Bowen in the courtroom today? Yes, sir. And would you please identify him for the court? And would you please identify an article of clothing that he's wearing and where he's sitting? Uh, Mr. Bowen is wearing a Clayton County Sheriff's Office jumpsuit and it's named to the left of me. Straight all right. Um, and just in case, just to cover everything, um, all of these incidents, did they occur in Clayton County? Yes, sir. Right. Judge, that's all I have. Thank you. Detective, besides the DNA, is there any other physical evidence that links my client to any of the rapes or sexual assaults? With test results that have been confirmed, no, not at this time. Okay, so basically the only physical evidence is the DNA? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you get any physical evidence from any of the knives that were taken from his vehicle? They are being tested at this time. Tested for what? Um, any DNA from our victims. That hadn't been expedited? Um, no, that has not been expedited. You mentioned photo, well, you mentioned uh, lineups. Yes, sir. What type of lineups were conducted in this case? It's called uh, what we call a six pack lineup, uh, which is basically a lineup of um, Mr. Bowen will be placed in the lineup. What normally happens is we would send a picture off to the Department of Driver Services with Mr. Bowen's um, information. And we would ask the Department of Driver Services to produce a lineup for us with people in that lineup of similar characteristics, build, skin complexion, so that it's not a biased lineup. We have an outside source um, who usually puts the lineup together. And then they send us back pictures of Mr. Bowen in a lineup, um, and that those pictures are shown to our victim. So just to be clear, there was no physical lineup. No, there is. Oh, you mean that's a show up? No, yes. No, there was no show up where Mr. Bowen was placed in the room with other individuals. How many of the victims identified Mr. Bowen from the lineup that they were shown? Um, just one victim. And who was that? Um, the victim that, victim that identified him from the lineup. Give me two seconds. I believe that. Was you mentioned that uh, Ms. Phone was found near the defendant's residence. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Were there any fingerprints on that phone that connected to him? No, sir, at the time, as I stated previously, it was raining outside, so it would, it would not have been possible for them to retrieve fingerprints from the phone. How many of the victims gave any type of facial description of the perpetrator? Um, three victims were able to get facial. The rest of the victims had their eyes covered or were attacked from behind. I have no further questions. Anything else about you? No, ma'am. State, all right. State rest? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. You can step down, thank you. Does uh, the defense have anything? No. All right. Argument? I'll wait my opening. We will submit the case based on the testimony of the detective. All right, thank you. So basically, in essence, that means that there is probably a cause for the rape against first warrant in 3698. Probable cause for the second warrant. Warrant Indian 3700. Probable cause for the third warrant, where the, the warrant ends in 3704. These so far are all rapes. 
probable cause for the BIP victim. Running up. For the rape. Sexual battery, I should say. And that's the warrant ending in 3701. Probable cause for the fifth victim. That's the warrant ending in 3703. Probable cause for the sixth warrant. And that's the victim of rape. That warrant ends in 3699. Probable cause for the seventh victim. And that would be, it was the eighth particular um, warrant that you brought. And that is the eighth victim. That warrant ends in six, five, three, six, eight, nine. That is the rape. And then probable cause for the rape against that warrant ends in 3776. And that's also a rape. Eight victims. Eight rapes. Probable cause for all. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Judge Dallas, that concludes my business. Well, may I be excused? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank <laughs> you.